Today's video, we're going to be talking about Pilot Custom 74, and we're going to be doing a line comparison, just like kind of we did the one for Sailor earlier. We're going to be doing one for the Pilot Custom 74. So, if you're here watching this video, it's probably because you're researching entry-level gold nib pens, and the Custom 74 is one of the most popular entry-level gold nib pens. So we thought we'd do a video on the Custom 74. Now, since you're looking at Custom 74 pens, it's very likely that you've also bumped into all of Pilot's custom pens, and there's, there's, a, the, there's a lot of them. <laughs> there's even more of them in Japan, but you know some really popular ones here, for example, are the Custom 823 and the Custom 912. And of course, today we're talking about the Custom 74. So you might be wondering, what are all these custom pens? <laughs> and what do all these numbers mean? So hopefully today's video can shed a little bit of light on the naming system of these custom pens and what exactly custom means. So in Japan, Pilot is probably the biggest pen maker. And the custom series of fountain pens are really they're named custom because they are truly customizable for every person. So there are actually, in Japan, for example, the Custom 74 comes with a standard 11 nibs. So there's a range of 11 different nibs, and you can choose from them based on how you write. So if you write very light, or if you write with very big characters or very small characters, or if you prefer a broader stroke, <laughs> um, you can choose your pen and your nib depending on that. But in the US, for example, the Custom 74 is only offered in four nib sizes, extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. Whereas in Japan, there are seven nibs on top of that, so 11 total. So these nibs and the choices of nibs that you get among them really make your fountain pen choosing experience customizable. And that's just one example with the Custom 74 line. With some of the other pens, you even get more variety of nibs. So that's where the custom comes from. Truly, truly, truly custom. custom. Yes. <laughs> so that's the custom. Maybe Star, I can talk to you a little bit about the numbers. The numbers. All these numbers. What do they mean? So custom 74. The 74 must mean something, right? Uh, so it's important to note before I go into it that 74 is a two-digit number. And that two-digit number, 74, uh, commemorates Pilot's 74th anniversary. So Pilot was founded in 1918, and they celebrated their 74th anniversary in 1992. So that's where the 74 comes from. Now, the Pilot 742 is a three-digit number. And I sound ridiculous, but I promise this will help you remember. So the 742, right? We still have that 74 in the first two digits, so you're still commemorating the 74th anniversary. Right. But the third digit indicates the level size of the nib, right? So the 74 is a size 5 nib. The 742, we're on that second level, is a size 10 nib, mm -hmm. and the 743, woo, so the 3 indicates the third level, so that's a size 15 nib. Ah. And then if we were to reference other pilot pens, such as the pilot 823, right? Right? So the 823, right? Yeah. That commemorates pilot's 82nd anniversary, which I believe was celebrated in the year 2000. Mm. And the More math. three, yeah, it's really <laughs> super fun. And the three, that third digit, is going to tell us that it has a size 15 nib. Mm. And if we want to keep on going, yeah. right? Let's do it. Pilot <laughs> 912. Daisy, what does the 91 stand for? So 91 would mean the 91st anniversary, and the two would mean the second tier, tier of nibs, which is a size 10 nib. And then... I get it? Yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah. 10 stars. Now, just for you, if you wanted to take a quick guess, the Pilot 92. What do you think? <laughs> you can answer at home. No, the 92... <laughs> say, it, say it out loud. Yeah, say it out loud. Um, the 92 it celebrates the 92nd anniversary, and because it's only a two-digit number, means that it's the lowest tier size nib, which is a size 5. Or 5. And then, and then it's important to note 
that a size 5 nib can be on different size bodies, right? right. So it can be on a different different pen altogether. Just because it's a size 5 nib does not mean that it's tied to a custom 74 or a custom 92. Right, exactly. So that is the very, very interesting numerical system that Pilot has come up with to uh, name and commemorate their pens. It's actually super fun once you can grasp your head around it. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty I'm, cool I'm, how they came up with that, I think. It's just so logical. Yeah, it's very formulaic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just mm. see numbers in my head just like bouncing around. Um, <laughs> yes. So those are the numbers. And then, Daisy, would you like to talk about the gold nib aspect of the pen? Uh, yeah, so like Star I was saying, the Pilot size 5 nib is not limited to one particular pen. So a Pilot size 5 nib, if it's 14 karat, will be the same across many different pens. So the Pilot 92, Custom 92, and the Custom 74, they actually share the same nib. Today's video is going to be focused on the Custom 74 just because that's really the most popular entry-level pen of all of Pilot's custom pens. And if you are, so what does an entry level pen, gold nib pen really mean, right? Um, what that term really means, and it's thrown around on, a lot on the internet, it means that maybe this isn't your first fountain pen, you're somebody who's gotten a Metropolitan or a Twisby or a Coeco, um, and those are steel nib pens. But after a couple of years of using that, you might become curious about a gold nib pen. So gold nib pens are usually a little more expensive because of the materials. They are upwards of like $150, $160 around. And the Custom 74 is considered an entry level gold nib pen. They go up from there <laughs> a lot, um, but this is a very good starter gold nib pen. So that's why we're doing today's video on the Custom 74. Um, it is, often compared to Sailor's 1911S and Platinum's Century 3776. So these three are kind of the big three pen makers of Japan and the Custom 74 is among them when you're when you're considering your gold nib pen. So that's why we're focusing today on the Custom 74. And just to reel us back in yeah. to the Custom 74 here in the U.S., if you're watching this, if you know Yoseka, uh, you're going to want to know what custom 74 pens we have here. Mm -hmm. And the custom 74 pens that we have here, as Daisy mentioned earlier, here in the U.S. we have four types of nibs, right? Yep. So we have the extra fine, the fine, the medium, and the broad. So those are the nibs that we're working with. And the Pilot 74 colors are super fun. They come mm. in a bunch. They come in transparent. Smoke, orange, blue, violet, teal, or low. And what I love about the Custom 74 is that it has a very light grade of um, translucence, right? So yeah. you can see the ink sort of going through, but that they're really like beautiful color. Yeah, they're gorgeous. And then the ones that we have here are all rhodium plated. Uh, we have rhodium trim, mm -hmm. rhodium accents, and that means that it's still a 14 karat gold nib, mm -hmm. um, but it just it has that silver chrome look, which is really beautiful. And the Custom 74 comes with a really beautiful clip and a nice little rounded ball at the end. It's mm -hmm. really great to stick into your notebook and just keep in your stationary set. It's a twist screw cap, and it's also postable. And I personally love the size of the Pilot Custom 74. I think it fits really well in my hand. Yeah, I think were, it's a good size. Like you were saying before, how it compares to Sailor yeah. and Platinum Pen. This one mm -hmm. is particularly longer, uh, and it just has like a really nice weight to it. And then the Pilot Custom 74 takes proprietary Pilot cartridges, but it can also take a converter. Uh, and the converters that it can take, uh, here we have a Con 40 and a Con 70. And they're both a little different. They hold different amounts of ink. And the Con 40 is a twist converter. And the Con 70 is a push converter. And later on, I'm going to show you how to fill your Pilot Custom 74. Fun. Yeah. Um, so stick around. So I was going to show you how to fill your Con 70. And even later on in the video, I'll be doing the line comparison with both the standard American nib offerings, which are the extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. And then as a special treat, we do have the seven additional nibs that are only available in Asia. So 11 total nibs that we'll be demoing. 
these nibs that are only available in Asia are like, like I said, sadly and not available in the US, but we were really excited to get them for this video to do a very representative demonstration of the pilot number five nib. So and if, I, if, if I can just mm. mention, it is just really cool to see what a difference the in-between nibs can make. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, Daisy, you were saying that you prefer a fine yeah. nib, right? I prefer sometimes a medium nib for my fountain pen. And to truly test out like a, a soft medium or a, like one of those nibs in between, it really helps you to try to understand what it is you like about each of the four nibs that we're so accustomed to here yeah. at the uh, American Custom 74. So. And some of them are very close together. They're very nuanced, but they are actually quite distinct from one another. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to see that later on in the video. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So today I'm going to be showing you how to fill your Pilot Custom 74 fountain pen. So for starters, your Custom 74 fountain pen will come with a Con 70 converter and a cartridge. Now what's cool about converters is that they hold a ton of fountain pen ink and the Con 70 is a push converter so it sort of creates a little bit of a vacuum fill, right? So the way that you use it is you press like that. So it seems super simple but there is a little bit of a technique that comes with filling your Pilot Custom 74. So first, we're going to unscrew the cap. And we had blue ink in here before, so we're gonna be using the same blue ink, but just to show you, we're going to unscrew the body. And the Con 70 is already in there, so it's super simple. But just to show, if you wanted to change your converter to a Con 40, for example, uh, the way that you would do that is you would just pop it out and then pop it back in like so. Make sure it's nice and snug. And then the way that the ink is going to draw up into the converter is through this little tiny hole right here on the nib. So today we're going to be using Soft Snow of O'Hara, which is a Kyoiro ink. It's a super beautiful blue, and I think it goes really well with this transparent Custom 74 that I have here. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our ink bottle. And then we're going to insert the fountain pen nib first into the bottle. And I sometimes like to hold the ink of the bottle at sort of an angle and if the ink bottle is filled with a ton of ink that's not necessary to do but just out of habit I always like to hold mine at an angle and it's easier for you to see. Uh, so as I mentioned before this is a push converter and a push converter also requires a bit of speed and intention. So you want to really make an effort to get that ink up there. You have to kind of have a sense of urgency and what that means is that you have to push quickly and push firmly. You don't wanna push firm enough that you're going to press the nib into the bottom of your ink bottle, but you wanna make sure that it's submerged and you wanna push firmly. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm holding the converter with my lower three fingers and I'm going to be pushing with my pointer finger. So we're gonna push firmly and with intention. And you can see that we managed to get a ton of ink up there. And sort of the faster that you go, the more of an ink fill you can get in your converter. And now it's pretty full. So you can see right there. And I'm just gonna grab a napkin and just wipe off that top part of my nib. And then we're gonna go ahead and close our ink bottle. This is uh, stationary safety first, right? We always wanna make sure we don't leave any open ink bottles lying around while we're doing other things, such as putting the body back on our fountain pen. So we're going to screw the body back onto our nib. And as you can see, we now have some nice ink there in our Con 70 converter and our Pilot Custom 74 is ready to write with. 
So we are moving on to the line comparisons for the Custom 74 fountain pen and we're going to be starting this off with the four available nibs that are in the U.S. So that's the extra fine, the fine, the medium, and the broad nibs. So this here I'm starting off is the Custom 74 in a 14k gold nib extra fine nib. Extra fine. EF. That's what you see on your pen. That's what you see on your nib to note that it's an extra fine. That's how you can check. And we'll do some. These are called figure eights. Somebody in the comments told me last time because our last video, our sailor comparison video, I was calling them squigglies. Um, but somebody was very kind to tell me that they were called figure eights. So we're doing these figure eights. Um, which are very nice. They approximate like some script characters. And then I'll do some uppercase. So this extra fine is actually um, extremely fine. It is much finer than most other extra fines. I'd say even compared to the Sailor extra fine nib that we tested out in the last video. I think this one is slightly finer than that. So that's kind of impressive because to me, the Sailor extra fine is already very fine. S T U V W X Y and Z. And obviously with the extra fine nib, it is just by definition, even though it is a gold nib and it is considered to be quite smooth, um, by definition, it is just a little scratchier. It's not going to be as perfectly smooth as a broad or a medium pen. And this just kind of like comes with the territory of extra fine pens. Okay, so now we're going to do our line comparison. You can see it's a very thin line that this pen produces. And in my earlier testing, I really compared it to a... So we're doing these... We're using these Copic felt tip multi-liner pens and the pen that I think most closely approximates this line is actually, oh this is not the right one, is actually a 0 0.1 millimeter. So here we'll draw the line. It's a 0 0.1 millimeter. And it really is like very close to that 0 0.1 millimeter. So I would say the if we had to measure the extra fine line, it would come very close, if not perfectly, to the 0 0.1 millimeter line. So next up in line um, with the US nibs that are available here uh, for the Custom 74, which comes with a size 5 nib, is the fine nib. Fine. F. And I think right off the bat, I can certainly feel, and I think you can even see on the camera, the fine is definitely different from the extra fine. If you can't tell on camera from like the thicker lines, you can definitely see from the darker lines that there is a significant difference. It's still very fine, so it's definitely like an appropriate, appropriately named fine pen, fine nib, but it is, it's definitely a step up from the extra fine. And we'll see 
what the line width is when we get to the Copic pen. Oh, I just wrote two J's. It's okay. <laughs> Y, Z, and then we'll do some lowercase script. It's a very um, smooth writing nib, I'd say, for a fine. It is the pilot the pilot pens really tend to be very, very smooth. So if you're somebody who likes a very smooth pen, I would recommend a Pilot Custom 74 for sure. It's a pretty, it's a good value and it's highly recommended entry level starter gold nib pen. And this is very smooth, high quality, consistent writing like the lines are all very consistent darknesses. Okay, so that was the line with the fine nib. And for this one, because it really is definitely a step up from the extra fine up here, I, according to my earlier testing, I gave it, I gave it a close match to the 0.3 millimeter Copic multiliner. You guys can see for yourself. And I'm using, once again, I'm using like the lightest touch with these Copic multiliners when I write with them, just so that I try to keep it as standard as possible. So that is the fine line and that's the 0 0.3. Yeah. So it is the extra fine. I gave it the 0 0.1. And the fine, I chose the 0 0.3. So because there is a clear distinction that you can feel for sure as the writer. And you can probably see even now just looking at the characters that are written across the extra fine and the fine. Next up after the fine in the U.S. Custom 74 nib range, it um, jumps to the medium. Um, and that's, I shouldn't say jumps, I mean like most pens go from fine to the medium, um, but a lot in the in the Asia nib range, there is actually a size in between, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But this here is where we're showing the US nibs. So this one here is the Custom 74 medium nib. And like, boy, that is um, a very big difference from the fine and it is so smooth to write with because partly because it is just so much broader of a line than the fine, but even, even the fine was really smooth, honestly. And we'll do some of my ABCs. This is really just such a smooth pen um, for 14K. It's quite, it's like unbelievable how smooth it is. And the ink that we've inked up with for these pens um, is Pilot Namiki Black ink for anybody Who's wondering? It's a pretty standard black ink. We recommend it a lot to anyone who's looking for a black ink. Uh, what comes after V? <laughs> v w X Y Z. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So next, we're gonna do the line, and for these standard nibs. Really, I'll show. Didn't really show this before, but the um, the vertical downstroke of these pens is really comparable 
to the horizontal stroke. So I'm doing this line and I'm turning my nib to the side so it's almost like a vertical stroke. So it would be very close even if I didn't do that. Okay, so that's the medium line and it's like a hefty, hefty thick line over there. It's very dark, very pronounced. It's like a proper, proper medium, I would say. Very similar to like even a Coeco medium, like a European medium. Um, it's nice and juicy. And then, so for this one, I paired it with a 0 0.5 line. And I think it is well matched. The, zero, the medium line there and the 0 0.5 Copic multi-liner line right there. Pretty well matched. If anything, it might be a little bit a little bit less than that, like maybe 0 0.45 or something. I don't know, maybe I'll write that, like 0 0.45 maybe, right? Like just under it, but very close to it, if anything. So, so far we did, we've taught, we've done the extra fine custom 74 nib. And like we were saying before, the, the custom 74 nib is just the pilot number five nib, so it's really the same nib across multiple pens. Like, if we were looking at the custom 92, also it would be the same nib. Um, so this is the extra fine, the fine we did, and then next was the medium. And last, the last available nib size, the broadest one that you get in the U.S. market, is the broad. Here we go, this is the broad. B. That's what you see on your nib if you get a broad nib. We'll do some of these figure eights or squigglies. <laughs> so fluid, so smooth. Um, to me, there's not a huge difference between the medium and the broad, but it is like you can see actually a clear difference, a clear step up between every one of these so far that we've tested in the pilot nib range but there and there is a small difference between the medium and the broad but it's pretty slight in my in my opinion and the broad pens you're actually supposed to write with on more of an angle like so before when I'm holding my my fine and my medium nibs when I'm writing pilot recommends using a slightly like upright angle for them so maybe a 60 degree angle you're holding your pen with and for the broad I'm more down at like a 45 or 35 degree angle so I'm holding the nib a little bit more like closer down on the paper to get the true sense of the broad nib. Okay, so now we'll do, we'll write some lowercase script letters. It's a very wet, flowing nib. And I, my letters obviously are getting much larger as I use these beefier nibs. <laughs> they're, they're taking up a lot more space, which is obvious. Um, you know, if you're somebody who writes very small, you're definitely somebody who would prefer an extra fine. But if you like to write large um, characters, then the broad pen or the medium pen would be more appropriate for you. So for the broad, as you can see, it is not too different from the medium, but a little different. Here's the broad. And 
So I stuck with the same one, the same one as before, the same uh, multi-liner as before for the broad. I gave it the 0 0.5 because I do think it comes pretty close to the 0 0.5. It's not too different from the medium nib. 0 0.5. And if anything, I would say this is like a true 0 0.5 as opposed to before. We were saying the medium nib might be a little bit thinner. Uh, might be like a 0 0.45. I think that the broad would be like a 0 0.5. And now that I'm looking at it, maybe even a, like maybe even a little thicker than a 0 0.5. What if what if we said it was like a 0 0.55 millimeter, right? Um, I think that that might be a little thicker than that actually on second thought. So breaking news, I changed my mind. I think this is a 0 0.55 is the broad. And the medium is like a 0 0.45, but they're very, very close. That's like a 0.1 millimeter away, 10. Okay, so there we have it. These are the four nib sizes that are available in the US for the Custom 74. So we have a line comparison for the four. We have the extra fine, which comes very close to a 0 0.1 millimeter line the fine, which comes with a 0 0.3 millimeter line, the medium, which comes uh, to about a 0 0.45 millimeter line, and then the broad, which comes to like, I would say 0 0.55 millimeter line. But they're all, I will say, of course, the extra fine by definition of being an extra fine pen is a lot is not as smooth as the broad or the medium, but they're all very fine. Pilot makes very, no, Pilot makes very smooth pens. Um, that's what I meant to say. And um, with very good, consistent, pretty wet ink flow. I, would, I wouldn't call the extra fine wet ink flow. I would probably call the fine, medium, and broad pretty, pretty wet and juicy. And the extra fine is just your standard, it's like an extra fine as expected. Very fine um, with a little bit of feedback there. Okay, so these were the four US available nib sizes. And next, we are going to talk about the extra nib sizes that aren't available here in the US. So that is the fine medium, the double broad, the coarse, and then there's some soft nibs as well in this nib range. So we're going to talk about those and we'll do line comparisons for those as well. But um, I think we're going to, for the sake of this, we want to keep everything on the same page so that you can see like all the nibs relative to one another. So I'm going to just do the extra fine for you again really quickly. So that was the extra fine and the fine. We already demoed those before, so I just did a very simplified version of what we did before. But the next one up, and this one is one of the Asia only nibs, so we're gonna spend some more time just like we did before on this one. So this is the fine medium. And it's kind of similar, you know, how Sailor, maybe, you know, um, Sailor has the medium fine, which is a an in-between the fine and the medium. Pilot calls theirs the fine medium, which is really uh, the same idea, something in between the fine and the medium, because there's such a big difference. Here's, there's such a big difference between the fine and the medium. You know, what if you need something in between those two? There's so, there's so much space in between those two. So that's where the fine medium and the medium fine come in. For a pilot, it's the fine medium. So this is the fine medium. F M is what you see on your pen. And we'll do some figure eight. and show what some actual letter writing looks like with them. Does anybody write like all in uppercase letters like this? I used to, 
when I was in high school, I used to try to write like this because I thought it was really cool, the people who did this. But um, I don't know, it just always felt unnatural to me, so I couldn't actually take to it in my handwriting. But I always thought that was cool when people like wrote in these all capital letters. My handwriting uh, every day is like more of a mixture of like print and script. It's like an amalgam of the two. Yeah. Okay. So now we're up to the line. The line for the fine medium. And the fine medium is really... It's well-named. I think all of these are really well-named, like, well-sized nibs because it truly is, like, just the in-between size between the fine and the pilot fine and the pilot medium. So it's really perfect because there is so much room to, like, room between the fine and the medium nibs that this is, like, exactly the perfect in-between if you're if you're like a Goldilocks looking for something that's not too, not too fine and not too medium. This is, this is your pen probably. I really like this one. Okay. So for this one, um, the available Copic multiliners are really, it goes 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and then it jumps to 0 0.5. So sadly, I don't have like a perfect match for this one. Um, this one, I also had to use this 0 0.3, but you can see it's much darker than the 0 0.3. So I would say it's bigger than the 0 0.3 millimeter. So I'm going to say it's like a 0. Point, hmm, I'm going to say it's like a 0 0.4. Yeah. I'll call that a 0 0.4. Okay, so next up after the fine medium, and we'll probably speed up through this as well is the medium that's the next one in the in the progression of fine to broad pens so we already covered this one before when we were talking about the u.s nibs because this one is available in the u.s so we'll probably go very quickly through these next two actually the medium and the broad which are both available in the u.s Okay, so we sped through the medium and the broad lines because we already covered these before, but I just wanted to have them all on the same page as the fine medium so you can see that the fine medium is really in between all these different sizes. The next one up, and I'll probably I'll start a new page here, um, is the double broad. So the double broad is the next next available nib size, next thick available, next in thickness, I guess, um, available nib size in the Custom 74 line that is only available in Asia, um, unfortunately, but um, just for testing purposes today and just to give like a good demonstration of all the truly like the, the customizable range of nib sizes that Pilot offers we wanted to have all of those available for today's video. So the next one that we're gonna be showing is the double broad. The double broad um, really has like, like a very rounded tip on the nib. And this, similar to the broad pen, you're supposed to write with it, Pilot says you're supposed to write with it with um, a greater slant. So I'm down, I'm very close to the paper here. Um, probably at like a 35 degree, 40 degree angle to the paper here, as opposed to the other pens where I'd be writing a little more upright like this, um, at like a 60 degree angle or something like that. Um, Pilot wants you to write with this one a little bit more on a slant. So this is the double broad. And it's very broad. It's like whoa and you think you see like a db on the nib but the the notation for this one is just two b's double broad bb and wow that's like 
a marker. <laughs> it's so thick. Um, okay. And then we'll do our capital letters. A. It is very thick and very wet, this one. So with these broader pens, they really do require fountain pen friendly paper. Today we're using Tomoe River paper. So you can see there's no feathering and no bleeding. Um, otherwise, if you use um, a paper that's not fountain pen friendly, it can really bleed through the page and show up on the other side of the paper. Um, and then you wouldn't be able to write on the other side of the paper. Um, and it's just, it gets, it produces an even thicker line if you write with paper that really can't hold the ink that well. So, because this one is so broad, a double broad, um, you need good paper and with any broader pen, you need more of a dry time because so much ink is being let out with each stroke that if you were to run, I'm not going to do it because I would cry, um, if I was to like accidentally run my hand um, across these letters, it would just be like a smear party um, and that wouldn't be very fun. Uh, so that is like, it is very smooth to write with these broad pens, but you need to just allow your page to dry a little bit longer because so much ink is getting let out. So that's a double broad for somebody who has very big handwriting, likes to write big. Um, this is a good pen for you. Okay, so now I'll do my line. Wow, that's such a pronounced thick line. And for the double broad, this one, you can see it, I'll bring in the broad that I had to put in on the other page, but um, this is the broad up here. The broad looks like a fine little baby now next to the double broad, which is very, very thick lines, dark lines, a lot of ink getting let out. So for the broad, previously I gave it, I said it was about a 0 0.55 millimeter line. And for the double broad, because it is such a step up, I almost feel like Pilot can make like an in between those two, but maybe is that asking for too much? <laughs> I don't know. Um, then for the double broad, I gave it the thickest multi-liner that we have, which is the 1.0. 1.0 millimeter. Wow. It really is very thick. Okay, so believe it or not, beyond the double broad, there is a beyond the double broad in, if you live in Asia or if you have access to these Asia market um, Pilot Custom 74s, um, because if you truly would like a broader pen than that, it exists, believe it or not. And it's called a coarse nib. In Japanese, it's like kosu. And... It basically is um, like a triple broad pen, and this one, the same thing, you're supposed to write with it fairly, fairly um, down towards the paper, not upright like that. So I'm holding it again at like a 35 degree angle to the paper, and this is called coarse. Wow. And... What you'll see on your nib is a C for coarse. So that's what that means. And there are other coarse nibs that other companies make, like Platinum's, for example, makes a coarse nib. Um, 
but theirs is kind of more like a double broad. So this is truly thicker than that, actually, the pilot one. Okay, so the coarse nib, um, I was doing a little bit of research on these nibs, and um, it's supposed to sort of approximate, like, uh, because, because when these fountain pens were first introduced in Japan, um, they were supposed to replace the brush, the calligraphy brush, in um, people's writing. So this was used for calligraphy and this was used, this was supposed to replace like those really thick, coarse brushes that you would use for large Japanese character calligraphy. So that's kind of the reason for these coarse snips. And it really is like, writing with a very thick marker or something and very smooth very wet but you know if you're somebody who likes like a small grid in your planner or something like this would this would probably be like a nightmare for you because <laughs> it just wouldn't fit <laughs> um, okay so for the line for this one the coarse nib like broke my system because this line is just so thick um, that it's beyond. It's thicker than the than the double broad, which was the 1.0 millimeter multi liner, and the 1.0 multi liner is the thickest multi liner I have. So sadly, this broke my system. Um, but I'm gonna give it. I'll say it's a 1.0. Well, I'll draw the 1.0 line here, but it's truly beyond that. So this is like greater than 1.0 millimeters. I would say it's like 1.1 millimeters. That's how thick this line is. Maybe even a 1.2, very thick. Okay. Now, these are, um, so actually, this is so far what we have in thickness for these um, Asia nibs that are available on the Custom 74. Um, the extra fine, a very, very fine line. The fine is certainly a step up from that. The fine medium, which is like the perfect in between the fine and the medium. And then going up to the broad, we get beyond that a big jump up to the double broad. And then the coarse nib, which is like heavy. <laughs> um, okay, so. The coarse nib is actually what Pilot considers a special nib, even though it really is like just a continuation, in my opinion, a continuation of the double broad. It really is just like the next le le level up from that. Then we have another special nib called the music nib. And this nib from Pilot is available on other pens. It's not like a Pilot special nib. It, when it first, was released, music nibs were for musical note writing. So they actually have, like traditionally they were made, instead of having the two tines that a fountain pen typically has, a fountain pen nib typically has, the music nibs have three tines and two slits. And the main purpose of this is just, you know, the more slits you have, the more ink you're drawing out from the pen. So you're just laying down a lot of ink on the paper. That's the whole point of those extra slits. So the music nib traditionally was used to write music. But today, I don't know, there's not a lot of use 
I don't think there's a lot of people who are writing music anymore, sadly. Um, but this pen is often used for calligraphic writing. Um, so, let's see, like, we'll do some script, or we'll do some, like, uppercase print. And this one also, um, the music nib, you're supposed to hold on quite a low angle to the paper. And you can even see here, just like with my print writing, it, it, it imparts like a certain calligraphy kind of feeling to these letters. Um, and the reason for that is music nibs create basically a very thick downstroke like that with almost like a little rounded circle at the bottom there. I mean, it's not as pronounced as I'm making it, but it does tick upwards like that. And then a very thin horizontal stroke like that. So you get these thick downward strokes and these thin horizontal strokes. Um, so this makes it, this line variation makes it pretty good for calligraphy writing as an application today. So I don't do calligraphy, but um, you know, like Roman italic type of lettering, I could see it being very good for like that. Um, so yeah, this one I'm not going to do a line comparison for because you don't really get this pen to write lines. I mean, it's not about the line width at all, I think. Um, you're getting this pen if you like to write, um, calligraphy and, um, you get this pen if you like to sketch maybe, um, and if you do, if you are one of those few people who continues to write music today, if you're like a composer or something, I don't know, um, this could be a good pen for you, but it's not really about the line with. The Q, R, what do you guys think of my, my italic script? <laughs> making this up as I go. T, and you can see like that's a very thin U. E. W. Whoa, I don't know if that's how you write that. X. Y. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah. So, kind of nice as like a, for invitations and things like that. Or I've, I've seen people write like whole letters. I've seen people who like just use this to write and it's truly amazing if your handwriting, um, if you practice with this pen and you know how to write with this pen. Um, so that's the music nib. Okay. Now, so far we've covered, let's see, the extra fine the fine, the fine medium. Oop, I just lost my paper. The medium, the broad, the double broad, the coarse, and the music nibs. These last two nibs were the special nibs um, in Sailor's fountain pen category, not Sailor, sorry, Pilot's fountain pen categories. Um, and then beyond that, there's actually, so we, we've talked about eight pilot nibs so far. And beyond that, there's actually three more in this nib range. And these are those soft nibs, pilot's soft nibs. And so that makes for a total of 11. That's where we get the 11 from. 
And the soft nibs are, they come in soft, fine, soft, fine, medium, and then soft, medium. So we'll show you, I'll show you these today, the soft line. Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna put them right here next to where I had the fine, the fine medium and the medium just so that we can see what they look like next to each other and what the difference is between, for example, a fine and a soft fine and a soft fine medium and a fine medium and a soft medium and a soft and a soft medium and a medium. Ooh, that was a lot of, a lot of words. So here, this is the soft fine. And what you see on your pen, if you get this pen, is SF. You see it on your nib in the top plate of your, the top plate of your nib. Um, like right. The soft fine, or not just the soft fine, but basically all of these pilot soft nibs are just that. They're softer. They're, for, they're the same 14K gold nib, but it's a softer nib. And so it really, the difference between the soft nib and the regular nib, so for example, you can see right here, the fine and the soft fine, um, is you feel it, it's a lot softer. It has some bounce to it, a little bit of bounce. And they're really intended for somebody, um, even though they do have a little bit of bounce, they're not made to be a flex nib or anything like that. They are, even though you do get some variation and if you do push down on it very ever so lightly, you do see some variation there, even though it's very slight. Um, these were actually made for somebody with very light handwriting. Um, and so if you do, so you're supposed to write very, very lightly with them. And as a result of writing very, very fine and very, very lightly with these soft nibs, you can see the slightest variations in your pressure that you're applying when you're doing your handwriting. So I'm going to be writing with these very lightly. And I think I do generally write pretty lightly with my pens, but even lighter, just to illustrate the point. Um, so you're supposed to write very lightly with them. Lightweight pressure is what Pilot says. And that way you get to see the even the slightest differences in your strokes. And this nib is really because it is so soft, it's a lot wetter and it's almost like smoother, like you perceive it as smoother even though it is just softer. So I, I really like these actually. And they're not so soft that they're like distracting to write with. You don't feel like you're like writing on like a flexy bouncy nib or anything like that. It's just a nib that's a little bit softer. So for this one, I gave it the same 0 0.3. So because it really is, the line is not thicker than the fine. So the soft fine is not really thicker than the fine. You can see this is the fine right here, and this is the soft fine here. And it's not thicker, it's just kind of darker. Um, so it's really about the same. It's just about the feeling that you're getting when you're writing with it. So that's the soft fine, and that's the fine. Okay, so next up after the soft fine out of the Pilot soft nib ranges is the soft, you guessed it, soft fine medium. <laughs> this is the soft fine medium. And we'll write that 
right here. So once again, the soft, fine medium, it has some bounce and some flex. I wouldn't, I, I don't, I hesitate to call it flex. It's not flex. It's just a little bit of bounce when you write. Just a little bit of ooh, like a slight, ever so slight bounce. Um, I guess I've heard some people say springiness as well. That might be a good, a good term for it to describe how that feels. Um, but this is supposed to be written with with a very lightweight touch, very lightweight pressure. And it's just exactly what the fine medium nib is. It's just a little bit thicker than the fine and finer than the medium. And so, you know, if you do want to do, if you did want to put a little more pressure down on it, it does reflect that immediately. You can see this is very light pressure up top and this is a little more pressure on the bottom. So it reflects those very slight changes in pressure in your handwriting um, without having to press down very hard at all. So I'm writing with this very very softly. It's like weird. It's weird to be writing these script letters not connecting them. I keep wanting to just flow into the next one since script is so flowy. Like that. Maybe X, Y, Z. Okay, so for this line width, let's draw the line. Once again, it is very close. This is the fine medium right here. <laughs> I feel like a teacher. Um, this is the fine medium right here, and this is the soft fine medium. So they're really, really, really close, um, except that I can see that this one is a little darker, um, and that's probably because there's more ink getting let out, even though it is the same thickness of line. So that's really what it's about. It's like if you like a pen that's ever so slightly more of a wet writer, then you'll probably like these soft pens, it's pe these soft nibs. Um, so this is like the same thing. I gave the fine medium, it's a slightly larger than 0 0.3, I called it a 0 0.4 millimeters. So I'm going to say it's the same thing, this soft fine medium. So it's close to the soft fine, right, which we gave a 0 0.3, but it is a little thicker um, and definitely a little darker than the fine medium here, but all very close, just, just wetter, wetter feeling, wetter writing. And last but not least, the final nib in the nib, the 11 nibs of the Pilot Custom 74 is the soft medium. So this is the medium as a refresher and we'll be doing the soft medium right next to it so we can sort of be able to see them side by side. Um, and the medium nib is already honestly it's very soft, very juicy, but with the soft medium it's just ever so slightly more than that. Soft medium. S M. I really like this one. I really like the soft nibs. <laughs> They're so pleasant to write with. And this is the lightest touch 
very light, no pressure. And then this is some pressure on the downstrokes. So it is just ever so slightly thicker. This nib has that bounce to it, just like the other ones, just like the other soft nibs. Someone had commented on our last video that they wanted like to see all the different letters of the alphabet when we demoed these nibs and these pens. So I hope you're not terribly bored watching me write the <laughs> A to Z in both um, uppercase and lowercase, but we do read all of your comments and really appreciate them. Um, you know, we're very new to these YouTube videos, so if you have any feedback for us, we love that. Or if you just have very nice things to say, we also love that. <laughs> for the medium, you can, okay, so I'll do, this is the soft medium, and this was the line for the medium. So, line for the soft medium, and then the line for the medium. They're really close, just like with the soft fine and the soft fine medium. Um, really very close, just a matter of wetness. Once again, I'm going to stick with the same Copic multiliner that I had given for the regular medium nib. And that was the 0 0.5. So same thing, this is a 0 0.5 line but it is just a little bit thinner than that. Maybe a 0 0.45, like that. So there you have it. Those are the 11, whew, that was a lot. Those are the 11 nibs that are available um, on the Pilot Custom 74 in Asia. The extra fine, fine, fine medium, the medium, the broad, the double broad, and we're going up in just thickness over here. Um, and then the double broad is considered one of Pilot's special nibs. There's actually even more nibs beyond this, but this is their 11 standard nib that are offered on the size 5 nib. If you size up to a size 10 nib, there's even more options, but we're just doing these because this is a lot already. <laughs> um, we'll save that for another day. Next up was the coarse nib, which is even thicker than the broad nib. And then the other special nib was the music nib, which was a lot of fun to write with, really originally designed for uh, musical note writing, but today a lot of people use it for almost like a stub nib um, for calligraphy. Um, and then, lastly, we demoed these soft nibs, the soft fine, the soft fine medium, and the soft medium. So now we're going to do just the line comparisons of all 11 of these pilot nibs. And the reason, and we're just gonna do it really quickly to show that there is a distinct difference between each and every one of these 11 nibs, even though sometimes the difference is rather small. Um, there is a distinction and it's very clear and you can see it on camera, I believe, and I can certainly feel it as the writer with these pens. So this is the extra fine, the 0 0.1. Here we'll just do fine. So if you're somebody who's trying out the pens or thinking about these pens for the first time and you like a fine pen, but 
you don't want something too, too fine, like hairline. I would say like this extra fine is like hairline. Um, it's so, so fine. You know, Pilot has that in between for you. It's the fine, which is still really, really fine. It's um, a lot finer than a lot of European fines for sure, but it's not too fine. It's not like a hairline fine where it's not, you know, it's still, you're still feeling the pen as you're writing with it. You're still seeing the gradation of the ink. Um, and the next one is the fine medium. And how cool that you can also see there's a clear distinction between the fine and the fine medium. And just even among these four, you can see there's a clear difference. Okay. And that is like a 0 0.5. Sorry, I had said this was slightly less than a 0 0.5. Okay, and then after the broad, in Japan, there is a whole world of other nibs after the broad. Um, we have the double broad, which, like you can see, the, the in my handwriting, you can see the two loops of the B there, but in my handwriting, my two loops of my B kind of like melt into each other there, so it really is thicker, a thicker line. That's the double broad, and I paired that with a 1.0 Copic Multiliner. The 1.0 and the 0 0.1 look the same for these multiliners, so I have to be careful I'm grabbing the right one. Okay, so this is the 1.0 Multiliner. And then, beyond the double broad, we have the coarse nib, which is, oh, let it move my paper. The coarse nib is a C, and that is really thick as well, like. And I gave that a greater than 1.0, so maybe like a 1.1, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1 millimeter, greater than, right? Okay, so those are the nibs right there, and then we're not going to forget about the soft nibs, which I'll put on the side right there. And I'm going to leave the music nib out of this one, because the music nib, like I was saying before, it's not about the, the thickness of the line for the music nib. So that's the fine right there, here. And we're going to do the soft fine right here. So very similar, but just a wetter, darker line. But just darker. There's the... S, F, M. Really 
the same line width as the medium, as we were saying before, but just a softer nib produces more ink flow and it's like darker because of that. Oh no, okay, that's okay. <laughs> But ever so slightly thinner than that. Okay, so these are 10 of the Pilot nibs, the complete collection that's available in Asia, minus the Music nib, which is a very special nib that is not really about line width. But you can see, and this is what I love about Pilot, you can see the clear, the clear, like, gradation of thicknesses in lines with every step up that you're moving and I really think that this is why these pens are called custom it's really if if you are looking for a fountain pen um, you're supposed to be able to find it no matter how no matter what your handwriting is no matter what your style is you know if you write large if you write small if you if you hold your pen upright, if you hold your pen very low, um, if you write heavy-handed, or if you write um, with a very soft touch, you are supposed to be able to find your pen, and I think you really are able to find your pen in um, in this collection of pilot pens. From going from extra fine to coarse, and then the soft range as well. So yeah, hopefully you guys find this helpful. Thank you so much for watching our Pilot Custom 74 video. We hope you learned a lot about all the different Pilot nibs and why this is a wonderful entry level gold nib fountain pen. Let us know if this is the entry level pen for you or if you decided on another one. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye guys.